Well, gold prices have been on a roller coaster this week, down yesterday, up so far today. Well, my next guest says it's all about the dollar. George Garrow, Garrow, excuse me, has a long history with gold. It saved his family from the Nazis. The background is fascinating. He's a vice president of Global Futures at RBC Capital Markets, a former president of the International Precious Metals Association, and a 40-year veteran in commodity trading. Uh, commodities trading. George, thank you so much for joining us. Let's start right off the bat. Just give us a little color on your family's history. Well, I can only tell you that I was born in London and I lived in Hungary when I was a child um, and came to America in 1947 and became a Yankee the minute I could. All right, and I know gold figured in there. Let's talk today about gold and the dollar. We mentioned just a second ago, they seem to have this yin-yang relationship. Yesterday, the dollar was up. Gold fell like a rock. Today, dollar's weakening, and of course, we're seeing gold bouncing back. So is gold an inflation play, and is there ever a time when those two markets move in lockstep? Well, first of all, gold is an inflation play, in my opinion. It is also another currency that uh, came to light uh, and I also believe that on a daily basis, uh, gold does act like a futures contract, uh, not always the same way an ETF or exchange-traded fund um, acts. So you have to realize that gold has other properties. Uh, silver, of course, is a bridge between industrial demand and uh, producer demand or actually industrial and investment demand. So silver actually this year outperformed gold. Now what is driving, let's talk a little bit, we're looking at um, silver recovering from the recent slide there, one week down about 3%, but, but let's talk about some of the factors driving gold prices and commodity prices overall are precious metals. We've got inflation, we also have global demand perhaps increasing, and then I know ETFs may also be having an effect on this market. Yes, well, of course, inflation is uh, a very different and important item for a lot of people around the globe, not just in the United States, who are concerned about their currency uh, being deflated. And it is also uh, noteworthy that the coffee, sugar, cocoa, uh, cotton, uh, record highs and soybeans are inflationary and are not part of the core inflation figures that takes out food and energy prices. I mean, oil is still uh, close to $85. And so if you look back, uh, the 40% average depreciation of the U.S. dollar um, has uh, taken hold, and so gold has been uh, the allocation of choice for those who are protecting purchasing power. Now, what did, would you say about copper? This is something that I know chi Chinese policies, we often talk about gold in China and inflation, but let's talk about copper for just a moment. Well, let's look at it this way. If you look at your cell phone, you don't need copper, but if you look up at the ceiling and you look at all the lights in your refrigerator, you certainly need copper wiring. And if housing starts come back and it looks like uh, the QE2 stimulus in this country and in Europe uh, is starting to take hold, there will be need for housing, there will be need for copper, for infrastructure, and the Chinese will resume taking deliveries of copper. Now, for the moment, the Chinese have held back. They're trying to cool their economy, and so copper has dropped back a little bit from $4 to a little bit below $4, but it's still up from $1.50 not too long ago. George, what, what are your thoughts in terms of the next year, the next five years? Do you think this trend of rising commodities prices is something we will continue to see, or will there be a pullback at some point? There is always a reason for a pullback, and pullbacks come when you least expect them to. I mean, we had a big pullback in gold just this past week. You had a $50 pullback when Greece um, news first hit, and every time you've had a major pullback, it turned out to have been a buying opportunity. And you could have problems with labor around the world uh, in the mining countries. Uh, you can have problem in the unfriendly countries uh, that produce platinum and uh, palladium. George, quickly, do you think yep. the pullbacks are a buying opportunity for you? I think the pullbacks are the buying opportunities. All right. I always think, though. George, we're going to leave it there. Thank you so much, George Gero, Vice President of Global Futures at RBC Capital Market.